How's it going guys? This is Rio Morata, photographer based in Tilka. You, pro you guys probably know that I shoot medium format the most and then a little bit of 35 mil format. In today's video, I want to talk about the Fujifilm's C200 film stock. If you guys know, Fujifilm at right now sells three color negatives for the 35 mil format in Japan. This might differ depending on where you live actually, but in Japan, Fujifilm right now Currently sells the Fuji Color 100, which is basically my main film stock when I shoot with 35 mm the C200, and also the Superior 400 as of 2022. And I'm not an ex expert in terms of 35 mm so and I don't shoot frequently, so I can't give you my overall verdict of this film stock. But as someone who used the Fuji Color 100, and because I, you guys probably saw my previous video where I basically shopped around a film. Uh, shop that sells like film stocks actually. I picked up a uh, Fuji lit films like what called C200 which they had in store and I thought why not give it a go to see how it would perform. And full disclaimer for you guys like I was surprised that C200 in Japan is actually much more expensive than Superior 400 which you guys probably know Superior 400 is more of for the professionals aimed at for the professionals while the Fuji Color 100 and the C200s are more for the consumers and the Fuji Color 100 right now costs roughly 10 bucks while the Superior 400 costs like 13 14 dollars for the 36 exposure you know film and the C200 costs a whooping 15 dollars which I'm not sure if it's like worth it, but keep that in mind. It's a, probably the most expensive film from the film from the color negatives from Fujifilm. So after I purchased the C200 at Champ Camera at uh, Tama Plaza area, actually, I really wanted to test this film around that area because I've never been to the Tama Plaza station. It's like really far away from where I live. So and later I basically shot. The exact same film stock and it has some like exposures left so shot around the shibasaki area that i think we shot like last year or so to see how the colors would look
Oh, this is like something I started to realize, but Fujifilms, if you look at Fujifilms, each and every like color negatives, like the colors on the box that you basically purchased and start shooting. So instance, the Fuji Color 100, the box, if you look at it, it's like green and red. And that's actually the most prominent colors that would pop out on your photos if you scan it correctly. And also if you do the post-process efficiently, the Fuji Color 100, the red, especially pops out the most. C200, the box is green and magenta. And there was like this scene where I wanted to shoot this flower and, and it became apparent after I got my natives back and then when I scanned it that the magentas on the C200 look really promising and nice. it looks really nice, especially when when I came to sort of like a bridge where a train was passing by, I shot around one, 1 25th of a second but the train was like blurred but the way called the printing on the sort of like way called the train itself the magenta red ish area looked really fascinating and it, i guess this is something that the c200 delivers in terms of color it has this tendency of like providing rich colors in the magenta type of areas while the fuji color 100 has a more impact on the red so but other than that, the greens are almost the same for both the Fuji Color 100, Superior 1 400, and for the C200. And you won't like lose that much of a, like image details depending on which like foam stock you choose. And I also have to mention that it, the colors like renders really well, especially in golden hours. I did not have that much time. I didn't have like any shots of that except for this one right here. But if you look at the yellows and greens, they are really magnificent. Something that Kodak can never deliver because Kodak's on the sort of like the warmer side while Fujifilm provides the quarter side. However, if you if you like shoot at the correct time during the day when it's like really sunny out, it will deliver really nice promising results. And like I said, the C200 is like, it's nearly extinct in Japan and Tokyo, especially it's I, the major retailers don't sell C200s, unlike I guess in North America, Walgreens or some kind of drugstore sells that film. But in Japan, if I'm right, only Champ Camera is like the only location that I like previously talked about, is probably the only location, physical store that can purchase C200. And at the same time, it is the most expensive film stock from the Fuji films like lineup. And I would rather choose the budget op option of the Fuji Color 100 over the C200. This is sort of my personal preference, my bias actually. And and when I shoot with 35, I typically try to cut my costs as much as I can. Well, I actually enjoy shooting with C200 because it's, like I said, it sits in between the Fuji Color 100 and the 400. And because it's an ISO rating of 200, you have a little bit of flexibility they can do basically. I mean, when the sun starts to go down, I mean, typically it's best if you shoot with an ISO of 400 film, but this one's at 200, meaning that you have like one extra stop compared to the Fuji Color 100, meaning that you can either like open up the aperture if you want and have something blurred in the background, like the flower photo that I showed you. While like if you shoot with a higher ISO, like the Superior 400s, it's harder to like shoot like wide open, like F2, 1.8 and 1, F2, you guys know what I'm talking about, but, I mean, because it also costs like 15 bucks, which is insane actually. Like it's more, much more expensive than you know, Kodak's offering. And it's, and then like, and then because it's also hard to find and get by, I would rather stick to the Fuji Color 100, which is like sort of like, you can almost purchase the Fuji Color 100 almost anywhere in Tokyo and anywhere in Japan. And in Champ Camera, like I said, is the only location to purchase the, C200 and it's hard to actually travel by foot to that location because I live far away so I guess this might be my first and last time shooting with C200 but hopefully I gave you guys some kind of indication of what this film can do and not do and yeah hope you enjoy this video and like this video and if you have any comments or if you have any questions please leave it in the like area below i'm happy to reply so yeah we'll see you next time keep shooting people